We acknowledge that this church is on the sovereign lands of the Yulukit Willem of the Kulin Nation. We pay respect to elders past, present and emerging. Well, hello everyone and welcome to this Melbourne Diocesan service of Holy Communion on this, the first Sunday in Advent. My name is Bishop Kate and I'm here in this beautiful Holy Trinity Williamstown Church with the vicar of the parish, the Reverend Elizabeth Murray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Our opening hymn for today is Lord Jesus Christ, you have come to us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The prayer for the lighting of the Advent wreath. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, God of our ancestors, to you be praise and glory forever. You called the matriarchs and patriarchs to live by the light of faith and to journey in the hope of your promise fulfillment. May we be obedient to your call and be ready and watchful to receive your Christ, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, says the Lord, but my words will not pass away. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord comes. 
bringing to light things now hidden in darkness and disclosing the purposes of the heart. Let us open our hearts and prepare for his coming, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to God in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Eternal God, through long generations you prepared a way for the coming of your Son, and by your Spirit you still bring light to illumine our paths. Renew us in faith and hope that we may welcome Christ to rule our thoughts and claim our love, to whom be glory for ever. Amen. First reading comes from Isaiah, chapter 64, beginning at verse 1. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that they did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our psalm for today is Psalm 80, verses 1 to 7, then 17 to 19. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, you that led Joseph like a flock, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine out in glory. Before Ephraim, Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your power and come to save us. Restore us again, O Lord of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, How long will you be angry at your people's prayer? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in good measure. You have made us the victim of our neighbours and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us again, O Lord of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Let your power rest on the man at your right hand on that son of man, whom you made so strong for yourself. And so we shall not turn back from you. Give us life and we will call upon your name. Restore us again, O Lord of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter one, beginning at the first verse. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. 
Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. name of the living God. Amen. The season of Advent is written back in time from post-Easter so that the time of awaiting Christ's birth is understood in the light of the terrible events of the crucifixion and the glorious events of the resurrection. The church understands that the significance of Jesus' birth cannot be understood apart from the whole story of his life, death and resurrection. So that the time of waiting for Jesus' birth, this season of Advent, is filled with the significance of what this entry into the world means, no less than the salvation of the world and of you and me. The Gospel reading today then from Matthew is from the terrible world from Mark, I apologize, from the terrible world of the time that was written around in 70 AD, shortly after the fall of Jerusalem, pillaged and burnt by the Romans who crushed the Jewish rebellion like so much straw in the wind. Yet for the early Christians of Mark's community, the story of Jesus his death and resurrection gave them hope, even certainty, that this was not the end of the story, that God's salvation was at hand and would attend to them as they clung to God, that the devastation of the Jewish world was due to the rejection of God's visitation in Jesus, just as Jesus had foretold as he wept over Jerusalem, how I have longed to gather you as a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not have me. So the reading today for Advent Sunday from Mark's Gospel starts with that grim sense of devastation and says, this is the world that God, through Jesus, is about to rescue us in. And St Paul in the epistle says to the Christians at Corinth, you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's interesting that this gospel reading from Mark is so often called apocalyptic and the root of the word apocalyptic is revealed. The disciples are to wait faithfully and joyfully for God despite what their circumstances might be. We may struggle to be like this, but it is not to deny its spiritual truth or vitality. The devastation of the times for Mark's community was also linked to the ancient stories of exile and the sense for the Jewish people of their identity being formed from the rescue from slavery in Egypt and then later in the time of the Babylonian exile in the 6th century BC a people reborn through crucibles of suffering, yet preserved miraculously by God's favour. And yet, a theme of these times in exile had been the ambivalence of the people, long years in Babylon, of separation from their homeland, had caused many of them to abandon their faith and adjust to the ways of the alien culture around them. Others remained steadfast to their faith and never accepted Babylon as their home. 
They refused to belong to a culture whose values were so opposed to their own. They held a vision of home in their hearts and yearned for the day when they could return. As with those early Jews living in captivity in Babylon, so the early Christians longed for God's deliverance. And this season leading to Christ's birth became Advent, a time of waiting, hoping, expecting, longing, a season for exiles, a time of yearning for light to dispel their darkness. Probably for most of the early Jews and the early Christians, they felt caught between adjusting to something, a way of life, acceptance of other values that made life easier, even while struggling to believe in something better that they knew, even dimly, was truer. But there was a cost, for it made them somehow homeless, aliens, and deeply alienated. Just as I think is the case for many Christians today, and not just Christians, but anyone who gives thought to the world we live in and what is required of us. The pandemic has shown this sharply as a choice between living together in solidarity, caring for one another, and following the call of so-called individual freedom and living, freedom and liberty to live for oneself. It's interesting that in the time of writing the US Constitution, the pursuit of happiness was understood as the pursuit of society's happiness. This understanding of the good of all appears to have fallen by the wayside in Australia, perhaps. And I suspect as a society, we really think of what it means that our country is called the Commonwealth of Australia. Advent in the church is a time of waiting on God. And this season of Advent is one of waiting unlike any other that most of us have ever endured. For it seems like we have been waiting for something or other for as long as we can remember, although in reality, it's been less than 10 months. But the consequences have been profound. We have been waiting for a vaccine, for a cure, waiting to see if we would survive, waiting to see if we could ever return to our normal social, working, professional, family lives even. And many questions remain unresolved. And so the wait goes on. In many ways, we are much closer to those early Christians living under the heel of Roman brutality, who cried to God, you have hidden your face from us. Advent is not the time where we distractedly wait for the baby Jesus to be born. The baby Jesus was born into history 2,000 years ago. Advent focuses instead on our own place of exile and whether or not this saviour who was born and lived on our earth has made a difference in our lives. Have we taken to heart the promises of hope that he held out for us? Do we have a great yearning in our heart for the sacred? A few weeks ago, there was an interesting program on uh, the ABC 774, the radio. Libby Gore, Libby Gore was the presenter. And she invited people to phone in about what life was like for them coming out of lockdown. And she found that for many people, it was a time of strangely subdued anxiety and passivity. And one listener recalled the words of Viktor Frankl, 
in his book, Man's Search for Meaning. Frankel spent three years in a concentration camp in the Second World War and wrote of the day the camp was liberated at the end of the war. And he wrote that people found it hard to go into the fields beyond the gates or to enjoy the sun. They were shocked, almost stunned, and unable to pick their lives up. So how might we pick up our lives now? How might we pick up our faith? I was given a hint about this this week in one of the collects, one of the short prayers for the Remembrance Day of Clement of Rome, who was an early pope in the church, and he died a martyr in 99 AD. He was one of the great popes, and the collect prayer reads, Almighty God, who gave to your servant Clement boldness to confess the name of Jesus Christ and courage to die for his faith. Teach us always to be ready to give a reason for the hope that is in us and to suffer gladly for the sake of our Lord and Saviour. It is this capacity to be always able to find a reason for that hope in us that tells us that our faith is still alive. So let us work to reclaim that hope after this time when our world has taken and is still taking such a battering. And our faith too has perhaps taken a battering. Let us find ways like those prisoners emerging from the concentration camp to enjoy the sun, to smell the flowers, to show tender acts of loving kindness towards others. Let us recast our thoughts on what makes a good life for ourselves and others. Let us take up some of the humility that the powerlessness has taught us, that even in the suffering, the things of the kingdom have been revealed to us. If we do this, then truly Advent will have served its purpose well and we will find a blessed Christmas. In the name of the living God, Amen. We together affirm the faith of the Church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, has promised that you will hear us when we ask in faith. Receive the prayers we offer. We pray for all the world. We give thanks for the beauty and wonder of creation. We are sorry that we have not always cared for the environment, the animals, waterways, land and sky. We pray for wisdom and strength to do all we can so that future generations can enjoy this world. We pray for those parts of the world torn apart by war and conflict. We pray that your peace will descend on all people. We pray for those in positions of authority throughout the world. Guide with your wisdom and power the leaders of the nations so that everyone may live in peace and mutual trust, sharing with justice the resources of the earth. We pray for all those working to relieve suffering in the time of global pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church and faithful people in this nation and elsewhere. We give thanks for those who share your gospel in word and action, even when it is dangerous. As we enter this season of Advent, and prepare to welcome anew Christ in our lives, sustain all pastors and people in hope and joy. Send out the light and truth of your gospel and bring people everywhere to know and love you. Enable those who minister among us to commend your truth by their example and teaching. May we gladly receive and obey your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in any kind of need, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. We pray for all those who are unsafe in their own homes. We pray for those who feel isolated and disconnected. We pray for those in need who are known to us. We pray for those whose needs are known only to you. We commend to your care, merciful God, all who are in sorrow, sickness, discouragement, danger, or any other trouble. Give them the knowledge of your presence and send to them those who can bring, who can bring comfort. Help those who care for the vulnerable and voiceless and bring us all into the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you for all your servants whose lives have honoured Christ. Encourage us by their example, so that we may run with perseverance the race that lies before us, and share with them in the fullness of joy in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour 
be yours always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who was looked for by the prophets, heralded by the Baptist, announced by an angel, born of the Virgin Mary, and revealed at last to men and women of every race. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Our Saviour Christ has taught us we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. this bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. All who repent of their sins, trust in Christ and celebrate his saving work with grateful hearts. Truly eat and drink the body and blood of Christ.
God for whom we wait. We thank you that you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. As we joyfully await your Son, keep us ever watchful, that we may be ready to stand before him on the day of his coming. Loving God, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.